What's going on guys? It's Kyle again with DTOM Knives and Gear and today we're going to be doing the review of the Artisan Cutlery Osprey. I hope I'm saying that right. This is the brass handled model. Stay tuned. Welcome back everybody. All right. So today we are looking at a Artisan Cutlery model. This thing is called the Osprey. Uh, this one is wearing the really, really cool brass handles, which as you can see, since I've had it, has gotten a wonderful patina on it. This knife was a gift from a very special man, uh, Gary Core EDC. Uh, Rodney has been a, a good friend. We did a, um, a, uh, charity raffle for him not too long ago because, you know, he had some surgery and was out of work and, uh, we, I tell you what, this community came together so, so very well. Uh, just awesome folks in this community to raise some money to help him out. And it did. And, uh, he sent me this knife as a thank you. And it's been a long time coming since this review. I mean, I've had this knife for quite a while. I've just been doing you know, a lot of loner knives. And so I am ready to do the review of this guy. And, uh, he knew, and you guys know that I like the big knives. Uh, I do not carry about, I, I don't carry about, I don't care about deep carry. I don't care about weight. It is one of those things that I like big stuff. It gets my juices flowing. He knew that and he sent this over and I am super stoked. This thing, like I said, brass, um, scales with steel liners and this is a D2 blade. So this thing is super sharp. It's actually a very tall blade with a, you know, saber grind that might come up 75%. So it's about 22 thousandths behind the edge, but it cuts like a dream. I love the way this thing cuts. Of course, it's a cleaver style blade. I love that. You guys know that. Uh, so it's a very interesting knife, very different looking knife, uh, with a big old handle on it for my big old meat hooks. The handle, uh, close length on this guy is like five inches. And so that's about what you get on there, uh, on your, um, your grip there. And as you can see, fits my big old meat hoods just wonderfully. It is also very, very ergonomic, uh, especially in this saber grip that I have here. My thumb rests on this little swoop back here. No jimping and it's not needed. Locks you in. Very, very comfortable knife. It does have this loop over carry pocket clip that does have what I don't like is the screws there that are big button head screws. So it kind of gets in the way whenever you are putting it in your pocket. I don't mind that it doesn't go all the way to the butt of the knife. A lot of people are going to not like that because the lanyard hole is taking precedence over the pocket clip. Doesn't bother me. The pocket clip is always done well with artisan cutlery or CJRB. Got to make sure I say that right. I have been screwing that up lately and just getting the, the syllable or the letters all mixed around. It's just crazy. And of course, lefty EDC and big um, uh, bearded gear always give me crap about that because I am the worst. I think I called uh, BJ Hill the other day, JB, and you know, because I call, you know, Big Red EDC. Oh, it's just, it's just so confusing. Letters are hard for me. So anyways, uh, this one. The only, there's a couple of problems with it as far as what I would like, but all in all, it's a great knife. One of the problems that I have is the flipper tab is a little lazy, which is, you know, not, uh, uncommon. This knife is around uh, about 50 bucks or so. Uh, so which actually I think is a great deal with the brass and, uh, D2 steel. I think it's fine. I think it's a great, uh, price. Um, but it is ring on bearings. It is super smooth. And as you can see, like all kind of guillotine, once you pass that detent, Boom. It is a guillotine, but it has the flipper tab there to catch your finger and come down. So it is very fidgety in that sense. But however, the flipper tab is a little bit lazy. If I'm flipping it on its side like this, like I usually do, it flips out just fine. If I'm flipping it from straight up, it is kind of, it doesn't want to go, yeah, you know, it doesn't want to go all the way up whenever I'm straight up and down, which I never really open my knives that way. I'm always flicking it like this. And in that way, it's fine. However, I have plans for this thing. <laughs> I think that I might try myself to put a hole in this blade to do a middle finger flick. I can, what I use, what I do a lot of the times is just use the fat of my finger and flick it out like that. Uh, but I think a hole for this knife would be perfect. Now, you know, the detent is very weak and because of that, you can shake this knife 
I don't usually do the shake test because I can basically shake any knife open that I have. I mean, really, uh, if, if, if you jerk it, you can pretty much, even if it has a strong detent, get that knife out of there. This one is a little bit weaker than most that I've had. So getting this thing to come out like that is really no problem. It has never come loose in my pocket or anything like that. No danger involved. Uh, but to be able to shake it out like that, some people don't like. I actually don't mind it. Uh... Just because it's the nature of the knife, it's it's just one of those things where sometimes I just kick it in my pocket and I'll do that and open it up. However, I think a, op a hole for a spidey flick on this would be awesome. Uh, I really couldn't find many of these uh, online. They might be out there, but I really couldn't find one um, for sale. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen these in stock, so I don't know if they're discontinued or whatnot, but it is a super cool knife. And of course, a super big one because Kyle likey. So it is about 8.75 inches overall, <laughs> five inch handle. Uh, blade length is about 3.75. Blade thickness is about uh, 0.15. And like I said, around 22 thousandths behind the edge with that grind. So I like the dimensions. What does it look like against some of the staples? Here it is against the PM2. So as you can see, it's not crazy. You know, it's not like massively bigger than the PM2. And then here it is against <clears throat> the Benchmade Super Freak. So it looks like a big knife. It feels like a big knife. But it, all in all, it's really not, you know, like massive, like some of my other blades. Uh, one we can, one that is massive and has a cleaver style blade is the Kaiser Sheepdog. Uh, this one is the XL. So this one is the <laughs> the big boy Kaiser Sheepdog. And as you can see, yes, it is much bigger than the Artisan Cutlery Ospreys. Now, I do own a Kaiser Sheepdog, the regular version, full titanium S35VN, but it is loaned out to my good buddy, Mr. Lefty EDC. So definitely go check out his channel and Instagram as well. He has just started his channel and he is killing it. But he is the one who has my regular Sheepdog as of right now. But I just want to just kind of show you the difference. With this big, huge blade, you know, it's the detent on this. It, of course, I had to do that. The detent on this fires this big old blade really, really well. See so if I can do it straight up. See, it does a lot better job of getting the um, the sheepdog out with this flipper tab. Uh, now, the flipper tab is a lot bigger, as you can see. So you get a lot more leverage. This is. A, you know, fairly minimalist compared to some flipper tabs that I've seen. And that might have a little bit to do with it. Like I said, it's not a huge deal. Um, it's just a little bit lazy, but uh, I like to open it up like this. And of course, as you can see, oh my God, I'm just making a liar. <laughs> I'm making a liar out of myself. But you can tell the detent on the Sheepdog is much stronger, which I really prefer than uh, that's on this guy. But I think if once I put that hole in there, this thing is going to be a really fidgety knife that I'm going to really love to carry. I've carried it some already because I love brass. I love copper. Uh, yes, it's heavier, but it looks so cool. I love the way it patinas. Let's go ahead and see how much this weighs because I do, I did not weigh that before we started. So it's going to be heavy with the brass. 8.45 ounces. Yep. So you know it's in your pocket. Do I care? Ha, I do care. I actually like weight in my pocket. I really, really do. I like to feel the knife in my pocket. A lot of people are like, yeah, you're crazy. But yeah, I'm probably crazy. Let's see what the sheepdog weighs, even though it's, uh, see, the sheepdog weighs 9.2 ounces. So the XL sheepdog is still, uh, it's a bigger blade and it is still heavier than this guy, which is just a little bit smaller, but with brass. So, you know, yeah. Probably not that bad. <laughs> uh, a lot of people are like, whatever, it's horrible, but that's okay. Not everybody is like me and likes the big, heavy blades. That's fine to each their own. I love this knife. I will never get rid of this knife because it was a gift from a friend. And uh, I know we all have knives like that um, that we keep not only because they're cool, but because they are sentimental in some way. This one is sentimental to me because... Uh, Gary Cordy C sent this to me as a gift, so it is going nowhere. Where are you going? Nowhere. If you know what that line is from, what movie it is from, comment down below. I'm going to send you something because me and my brother play this game all the time. Kirk, you cannot play. 
But anyways, guys, thanks for stopping by and checking it out with me because I really love this knife. Uh, when I do decide to try to put the uh, opening hole, I will do an update on that video uh, because I work at a machine shop. And uh, so, yeah, I think I can handle this uh, or I'll at least get some guys to help me out <laughs> because... Um, the machines are just crazy busy right now. We are so lammed. The medical industry is slammed, as you probably already know. So anyways, love you all. Stay safe in this crazy world that we are living in. And we will see you in the next one.